What's up guys, David, or 1202 and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today we're looking at the top 10 dumbest names in Yu-Gi-Mans. Num number two. The last list was a lot of fun, but you guys had a lot of suggestions for other dumb card names. Uh, because, you know what, to be fair, they had a lot of them. So the Discord and I compiled another 10 for you. Based on some of your suggestions, some of theirs, uh, some of my Big Daddy Dave executive decisions, stuff like that. Also for this video, I'm uh, I'm trying my new shotgun mic instead of the uh, uh, the Yeti on a pole in front of me. So uh, I hope it sounds good. Um, I could have recorded this uh, like a, like a demo video and then put it on uh, the computer and sound tested it and see what it so see what it was like. But instead, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dive right into it and record my first video with it without even testing it and uh, make more work for me later when it doesn't work. <laughs> Idiot. Hopefully this will uh, prevent me from having to sync the audio later in post uh, with the separate audio track the Yeti is recording Because uh, the, the the onboard microphone on the camera sounds like poop. But anyway without further ado, let's get into it Number 10 is one that's special to my heart in that I can't stand the name of this card and I think I am not the only one Christron Halkafibrax this Link 2 Water Machine might be one of the most infamous cards in recent memory simply because it facilitates a lot of stupid plays, leading to the banning or limiting of a bunch of tuners because it basically that this thing just allows you to get too much advantage and misuse tuners in a way they were never intended to be used. If it's Link Summoned, you can summon a tuner from your deck. Seems broken to me. But that's not what makes its name stupid. Well, no, what makes its name stupid is that Halka Fibrax is a barely pronounceable gibberish of a mess of a name. What the f is that even supposed to mean? The fan translation of needle fiber is uh, at least two real words shut together. You can pronounce them pretty easily, but Halky Fibrax gets pronounced differently every time I hear a Yugi tuber say it, even in the same video. <laughs> I think I just, I think I might've just done it. <laughs> what even is that word? Stop f***ing around. <laughs> I bet you anything it actually means a thing and it's actually like super clever or whatever, but I ain't googling that. I'm gonna willfully be ignorant because it's funnier that way. Number nine is Worm, uh, Zex? Is it Zex? Is it supposed to be Zex? Okay, uh... Xena needs Zex. <laughs> First of all, I don't think worms have sex. I think uh, I think a lot of them are asexual. Pro reproduce via budding or some nonsense, right? I know the point of the video is not like what these cards do, but uh, I can at least say it's kind of neat. When you normal summon it, you dump a reptile from your deck to grave. A foolish burial on a normal summon is a good effect. And you know, this is one of those, this is one of them cards that'll end up being good later in life at various points in the metagame because its effect is versatile depending on if there is a good reptile deck, which it almost never is. But had there been one, like that new one with the with the snacks is all right, I guess. You know, this kind of effect can could be applicable if they didn't have a spell card that just did this five times over or whatever it is. But I do want to ask the real questions here. Why is a deck where there are worms, like wiggly wobbly worms, why are they reptile? Like, I know that worms aren't insects. They're bugs, but they're not insects. Like, bug is a catch-all term for little creepy crawlies, but... So, so it's certainly not an insect type, but if you're gonna give it anything, why... We have spider monsters that are insect type, because it's the closest thing we can call them. Why is this a reptile? I, it's not a lizard. Number eight is one I don't even want to say because I I actually really hate this this archetype or series of archetypes. It's the onomatopoeia, the onomatopoeia things. And the one we picked was uh, oh boy, Zubaba Bancho Gagagakot. Like the Zexal anime gets the, a lot of shit for being like the worst one. And uh, if you didn't like have a very strong storyline, if you if you if you felt that maybe there was a, a chance that this one could miss, naming the protagonists cards after the sound you make when you're um choking on something, let's say, might not be the the best uh best course of action. Uh, it might just turn an annoying voice actor 
in an annoying anime and to have annoying sounding cards. Which is funny because some of the Gagagas and, and stuff are like some of the really, really good cards in this game. And this card's not bad at all. If you got a Zubaba or a Gaga monster on your board, except himself, you can just kind of special summon this thing. In a rank 4 to C deck, it, that's probably what you're going to want to be doing. Because, you know, free body's a free body, baby. So what is a free body? Let's look at an example. And it also lets you grab a guy out of your graveyard too. So like, you know, this thing is getting you some serious, serious advantage. It's a good card. It just, uh, it just sounds like something might be, uh, vigorously punching the back of your throat while you're trying to speak. I'm not, I'm not, I, I can hear it in my head. I just can't think of what I'm thinking of. It's, it's the, it's on the, it's, uh, it's on the tip of my head. <laughs> Oh, you gotta love what you do, boys. You gotta love what you do. All right, number seven. Prank Kids, meow, meow, meow. This Link 1 monster is actually super important to the Prank Kids archetype because that deck needed an extra deck monster that it could, like, go into. It didn't require you to, like, do shenanigans in order to get to it. I've played the deck a little bit. Um... It's been a while, but I vaguely remembering this being necessary for your play lines, because otherwise it's awkward. So the card's good. The card's good for the deck it's for. But uh, Meow Meow Mew? Okay, so a Mew is said to be the noise a cat makes. Like, uh, it's more of a Japanese sentimentality. But Meow is certainly what uh, us English-speaking people describe the cat noise to be. So this cat's name is Meow Meow Meow, or Mew Mew Mew, or in this case, Meow Meow Mew. Uh, the more you say it, the, the more stupid it sounds. <laughs> it's just, and it's also a bit redundant. I, th I think that's its problem. Like, why is it just meow meow? Am I crazy? I feel like I'm, I feel like... Number six, boogie trap. Now when you're starting to feel the groove, starting to feel that boogie, that's when you gotta play at your boogie trap. Insert, uh, some music clip. Probably Earth, Wind & Fire, right? <laughs> What I love about this card is that, uh, it's a spell card. <laughs> it's not a trap. Discard two cards. <laughs> Gross. Target a trap card in your graveyard, set it. You can play it this turn, though. Hmm. I do like me trap card decks. Uh, Dave likes his traps. So, you know, in theory, the card's all right. Uh, the discard two is really bad. But I guess if it's like trap trick or some hooey in your graveyard, it could be worth it if it, if it gets you the, if it gets you the win, I suppose. Yeah, but the name's dumb. Name's real dumb. Uh, Boogie Trap. A boogie board? Part of me thinks maybe it was supposed to be booby trap? Like, like, boobies? A booby trap that actually catches boobies. But instead we, we called it boogie. Also, what's going on in the artwork? It's like a dude playing, playing the fill. It's like the Pied Piper of Goblin. I don't even know. This is, this one is more confusing than anything else. Sometimes Konami likes to play jokes on us. Sometimes they'd like to have some fun with their card names and, you know, it might be stupid, but at least you can have the the self-assurance that it was at least on purpose. And I think that is probably the Ojama uh, Pajamas case. Uh, Ojamas sounds like pajamas. <clears throat> Thanks, Obamas. It's a, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty short stretch. Is it funny? No, but it is stupid. Also, this is part of that series of late Ojama support that just like duct tapes arm dragons and X and, uh, and uh, ABCs together with Ojama. <laughs> it's like this is an Ojo match, right? It's like, please trust us. Chaz's deck wasn't just a bunch of bulk he threw together and called the strategy. No, there is some synergy. Doesn't matter. Konami can literally print anything that they want. And in this case, they printed a card that duct tapes three disparate strategies together. Well, why are you pulling me? I'm right. If an armed dragon and or a light machine on your side of the field would be destroyed, you can banish an Ajama from your hand instead. <laughs> like, what? Those three things have nothing to do with each other, man. And then the rest of the effects are just like cycling your, your Ajama. So it's predominantly an Ojama card, but uh, that first part is, <laughs> that first part is funny. Here we go, boys. Straight out of the mean streets of y Yugi Man's, we got the D Boys. Me, the motherfucking villain that's mad. Uh, what I love about the D Boys, it sounds like a plausible rap group slash hip hop group boy band things name they just didn't think about so much. Yo, man, D Boys, that sounds tight, right? And they're all like, Nah, bro. That sounds like we all like. D <laughs> 
<laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that per se. It's just, uh, that might not have been your intended message. So, you know, language is key. And uh, also it's it's actually terrible. <laughs> Level one Dark Fiend, flip effect monster. When you flip it, you can special summon any number of your, your D-boys from your deck in a face of attack position. And then you take, uh, then you take 1k damage for each monster summoned this way. The card's bad because it's a flip effect, not because its effect is terrible. So if you could somehow circumvent the fact that it's slow as hell, it actually would let you set up a pretty solid board. That's just free, free monsters, frankly. <laughs> D-boys. Number three is, hey, true name. Hey, true name, how you doing? Hey, stop blowing my shit down, you jackass. This giant face in the storm returns all set traps and spells in the field back to the owner's hands. These oaths are accepted. Now, is Hey Trunade a stupid name for a card? Yeah, it's kind of dumb. It's uh, it's an oddly familiar way to address uh, a natural disaster. <laughs> <It's> very... <laughs> but what the best part about this card is not not its name, Hey Trunade. It's that its Spanish name is Hola Tornado. Ahora por favor deja de estar fastidiándome, baby. Gracias. Uh, if you don't have a playset of Hola Tornado. Uh, and you're like, you know, a side deck binder or whatever it is, you are doing Yu-Gi-Oh wrong. I am sorry. <laughs> what a, what a great card name that is. Number two, uh, I like this one. This one got kicked around the Discord a lot. That Wacky Magic. That Wacky Magic sounds like it's the name of like a weird sitcom about um, a teenage witch. Maybe? We now return to that wacky magic. Sorry, Steve Buscemi is Sabrina. <laughs> not only that, um, it's also just not very good. Uh, you can banish all spell cards in your graveyard to destroy all monsters on the field that your opponent controls, whose defense is uh, less than or equal to the number of spell cards you banished times 300. Or you could just play Regeki. <laughs> that bricky removal. <laughs> oh, got him. I know that there was a time in Yu-Gi-Oh when we didn't have Dark Hole at like three or whatever the hell it is and Murakaki and crap, but we had better options still. This is this is clunky AF. If you're running a deck with a boatload of spells in it, uh, like, like, like spell books or uh, Sky Strikers or something, you probably don't want to banish all your spells out of your graveyard for this thing. Like you you want them there for a reason, whether it's fate or to get the second effects on the other thing. Regardless, it, it, the deck you could play this in, you wouldn't want to. So that it's not good. <laughs> it's, and it's name is, again, weirdly informal for like the what's being depicted on the card like it's, it's very strange and we do have an honorable mention this time around in a similar vein to our boy Ola Tornado we got UA Perfect Ace at first glance UA Perfect Ace isn't a isn't a stupid card name the funniest thing about this archetype is that it sucks <laughs> As a UA player, I can assure you, making fun of them, it's just as fun as playing. <laughs> I, I think, I think what, to, to really truly understand the grasp and scope of what we're talking about here, we need to look at its German translation, perfect ass. Mmm, it's thick. Uh, <laughs> and we also do have a dishonorable mention, negate attack. A lot of you guys mentioned this one in the last one. Uh, it's another, as uh, a dishonorable mention for this list, is a card's name is so unstupid it hurts. And in this case, uh, Negate Attack, again, like Monster Reborn, is simply just describing what the card does. It's it's not stupid because there's no joke, there's no uh, obfuscation of, of what's going on. It's literally just Negate Attack. What does it do? It negates an attack. When your opponent's monster declares an attack, Negate that attack, then end the battle phase. Uh, this thing's a counter trap card? That's weird for this card to be a counter trap card because as a spill speed three, one would traditionally think you are chaining it to something like a uh, solemn judgment to stop a card, counter counter to stop another counter trap card. But no, in this case, you're, you're using it uh, in, a, in, a, in a window when a spell speed two would be would be sufficient. I guess it being a counter trap card means that uh, your opponent is going to have a harder time stopping it and preventing the ending of their battle phase. So this thing is a lot more likely to stick than like a battle fader or something. So I guess, I guess that's why it's a counter trap card. It's an interesting use of it being a counter trap card. Basically saying all jokes aside, I think the card's actually kind of neat in that design standpoint. 
And we do have a sponsor today. I like to rotate the sponsors now every video. In this case, today's is MetaMats. If you want a custom cloth playmat, use my code TROLLTHEMETA at checkout and you'll get like 10% off and it helps the channel. I like rotating them because I like you guys to actually be able to give them their due attention because they do keep the channel running. All right, the last one's one that got a lot, a lot of comments and things. And uh, it was actually in the original list for the last video, but uh, when Amanda and I were going through it and talking about like what jokes I could crack about each one of these, I couldn't think of a good joke for this one, so we cut it. The problem is the card's name is dumb as hell. So it's perfect for the list. It's just, I don't think it's very funny. And it is like the dumbest one. So it's number one. And that is training for hire for all your training needs. Oh, yuck the double pun. Fur hires in general are annoying because as a concept, they replaced the word for with fur and they even butchered the problem solving card text of those cards in order to keep the joke going. That's terrible. I gotta admit that's at least kind of funny and clever that they went that hard with it to even butcher their own established rules for writing card text. So lull, I guess. But it's like, you know, what, I, what joke am I supposed to make? Like, ooh, ooh, furries are weird. Uh, I don't know. They're, they're, they're good people. They're harmless, really. I don't know. I feel kind of bad <laughs> making jokes. <laughs> the card name's dumb as hell, though. Uh, it's up there with the, the Ponder Patrol's ship, shipping ships or whatever the hell that card name is. It's just like, it's like you just went so hard with the pun uh, that it flips back to just being noise and no longer a joke anymore. It's it's, it's impressive, frankly. And it's, it's okay. Um, it summons a guy from your deck, right? Man, I'm having some fun this video. This, that's the important thing, right? That I have fun. All right, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I did. Join us next week. I think I'm gonna get back to the best of the main sets because, uh, you know, I took a, I took like a, a couple weeks off from that. So now it's time to grind through a few more of them XC sets, man. We got to get to those pendulums, baby. Reasons. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. And uh, if you guys want a part three sometime here, uh, I might be scraping the bottom of the barrel. But uh, if you guys have some good suggestions, please let me know. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Huh, <laughs> clicking the subscribe button's a good move. I guess there's a first time for everything. Feel free to click on these third-rate videos from a fourth-rate Yugi tuber. But I don't have time for such amateurs. Come on, Mokuba. Let's go get ice cream.